Question, can we turn this three ton Pittsburgh low profile aluminum jack into an off-road jack? Let's find out. So I've had this Arcan jack for probably 10 years and it's worked really, really well. It's reliable, does the job. I've always wanted a second jack though. And so I finally decided to buy one. And then I decided I, what I want to do is make my new jack into an off-road jack. Now, I don't mean off-road jack that I'm going to mount in my Jeep and carry with me. I mean off-road jack just to roll around the property. You know, if I'm working on the tractor over here, or I get a flat on the tractor, or my trailer's over here, I need to jack it up for whatever reason to change a tire. I don't have to drag it over here, drag my floor jack out there, try to put a bottle jack underneath. Dragging a floor jack with regular wheels through the dirt and rocks is just... <laughs> it's just retarded and I've done it way too many times and so this jack I've drug you know all over around my driveway where there's not pavement and it you just end up dragging it through there and it's heavy so this aluminum will definitely be lighter but I want to fix some big wheels on it hopefully make it roll better just kind of around the property that's the goal all right enough talking let's get started okay that took all of 30 seconds Put the handles together, put the handle in the bottom, turn the knob. Now we just got to test it on the Jeep and make sure it works. Oh. That is noticeably lighter than the steel thing. Now I, I trust this. This is <laughs> pretty heavy uh, in comparison. This thing is noticeably lighter though. Wow. It's tall enough. To at least get jack stands underneath the axles okay so we just want to test this make sure it works just in case, case i got to take it back obviously when i start modifying it i'll never be able to take it back so all right here we go all right in order to get this out i was hoping that this piece would just slide out through here but this is a fixed piece this is a solid piece Okay, got all these loose. Now let's see if we can spread this apart. Oh, not quite. It looks like I gotta take this snap ring out. Well, the whole thing came off. All right. Okay, there's all the parts we took off. And this is what it looks like. I think that was the easy part. Now the hard part begins. Okay, I should have left all the bolts off because I got to take it off anyway because because I have to use this as my pattern. So I'll be able to lay my piece of steel right here, mark my holes, and drill them. Okay, I got it clamped on. This is seven by four. And I just made it flush across the bottom. That should give me enough space to drill my three quarter inch hole right here. And now I'll just go ahead and mark these with my Sharpie. Hopefully I can get my Sharpie down inside there. And uh, I got three to mark there, two there, and two there. And instead of drawing holes, actually, I'm just going to use the centering punch set. This is just the Pittsburgh set from Harbor Freight. I don't use it very often, but this is one of the times it's going to pay off. So just center those and then whack them. This might not come out in the light very well, but they all look like they're centered. Okay guys, I just marked one plate for my holes, and then you can see I clamped the two plates together with a couple of clamps. I drilled 1 8 pilot holes through all the holes, that way the bigger bits would stay perfectly lined up. And then I chose the final size for my bits, you know, I just measured the side plate of the jack and that's the size of bit I chose and here I'm just drilling these all out to size of course using a little cutting fluid as well makes it a lot easier and faster and make sure to get these clamps nice and tight and then you'll have a perfect mirror image of your two brackets
perfectly symmetrical. So this is quarter inch thick and I couldn't find these bolts in the sizes that I need in my hardware store that are, you know, an extra quarter inch long. So I needed bolts that are a quarter inch longer than these factory ones. So I ended up just getting standard bolts, um, quarter inch longer. And of course they didn't have enough of these in the graded hardware. And then this was a graded bolt as well. So I ended up getting a couple of these because they didn't have enough of these. So that was awesome. Now this hole is a little shallower. So don't just ram these down. You know, if you get them a quarter inch longer, just because your steel's quarter inch, uh, make sure they seat by hand and they not bottoming me down or anything. Cause this is aluminum in here. You don't want to jack that up. So be real careful. So these two bolts, they actually went all the way home without the washer there. Uh, one of these bolts, these same bolts right here, what I tried to put in here, it left about a quarter inch sticking out when I, and it just kind of bottomed down on something. So I didn't force it, of course, I backed it out. This one's a little shorter, so I ended up using a little bit shorter one than this one, uh, but it gets plenty of thread bite. Now my original plan was to use this half inch rod and put it through here like this, right? Um, but when I measured the outside of this and found out that we could use the three quarter rod in here, and the bearings are still in there. And that's a, that's a pretty dang good fit. Uh, I can't be happy with that. And then when we're talking the difference in diameter here, half and three quarter, you know, that's a big difference. This is gonna add some weight, but it's gonna be much more substantial. And I'm not gonna have to worry about the axle bending at all. Now, both of these have roller bearings on the inside, so I like that. They're rated for close to a thousand pounds and you can tell these are super substantial they're just solid and so are these and i think these are rated for more like 1200 so you know 1200 2400 plus about a thousand in each we're talking you know four thousand pounds that these four wheels should be able to hold up easily got the holes drilled out to three quarter got the three quarter rod right here okay so for this particular jack, going with wheels that are bigger than six inches, um, you'd have to remove these. Okay, now that we have the front wheels on, you can see that there's a washer. I mean, there's metal inside there that bumps right up against the frame. That's gonna turn against the frame, which I might put an extra washer in there uh, just, just to give it a little bit more bearing surface so that this inside part of the wheel, which turns right there, doesn't rub against, doesn't rub holes in this. Now I wanted to do the front first. We'll do the back next because um, I wanted to make sure that the axle, actually that the frame here sits level, okay? So the frame was level from the factory with the factory casters and wheels on it. And uh, now I've got to get it back level again because I'm using six inches in the front and eight inches in the rear. Okay, we've got it level here. Looks like two and a quarter in the front, two and a quarter toward the rear. So that's good. So now we've got to figure out where we're going to put this hole back here. And in order to do that, what I'm doing, starting with, is just measuring from the wheel here to this edge of the, so this will be the bottom edge of the axle. So I'll be measuring up from the floor. So pretending this is sitting on the floor like this, right? What's the bottom edge of this going to be, this hole? And so we measure that and it is three and five eighths right at the bottom edge of that hole, okay? So that's what I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna put the bottom edge of my bit. And so we'll come around the back side here. And then we just measured up three and five eighths, made a couple marks right here. And I also made a mark along the back edge here with my Sharpie so that I know I can't drill past that. All right, now, this is three quarter outer diameter. Of course, this is one of the axles that goes in here or one of the sleeves that goes in here. Um, half inch inner, three quarter outer. So I can put this, you know, right up against the aluminum right there. Uh, that won't leave me much room for tolerance. So I might bring it out just a little bit like that and then drill my hole right there. Maybe like one eighth or so. That still gives me plenty of meat out here. It's gonna give it plenty of structural support down below and up high though, I think. Okay, so my vertical mark didn't come out very well, but you can kind of see it right there. That was along the back edge of the axle, or the uh, jack. And then there's my line up from the ground that's three and five eighths. There's a mark there, there's a mark there. And then so I just set my circle, this piece right here on top of that, drew a three quarter circle around it. Now we'll get that drilled out with a mag drill. 
All right, so I couldn't use my regular clamps on my DIY stand because they can't reach this. This hole, if I turn this piece of steel sideways, the hole's too far away from my mag drill. So I had to clamp it here with these clamps. I'm just using this centering punch set as a uh, alignment tools and it's working really well. So I'm just dropping those in the holes to keep both my pieces clamped together, okay? And then uh, let's get the power on here. Magnet, oil, power. And of course a mag drill, you know, makes a total mess, but you know, you have, even if you're using a drill press, you're gonna have shavings everywhere anyway. A lot of times they're just kind of wadded up in a ball like this, but we use the mag brush to clean this out. The precision of this is just amazing how perfect that hole is down there. I mean, that is perfectly machined at three quarters of an inch. There goes the slug. And uh, let's get it unclamped and cleaned up. Okay, now I've got to do some axle support. And this measures right at six and a quarter. And so I just picked these up. This is just some iron pipe threaded on both ends. These were like four bucks a piece. And we'll go ahead and cut the threads off on one side on the bandsaw, and then we'll measure our six and a quarter and go ahead and cut this one. Here I'm just using the drill press vise to hold the axle still. I'm just drilling small holes in the ends of the axle, that way we can drop cotter pins through. Cutter key barely fits. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's just get some close up here of what the bracket looks like. And one of my buddies suggested that I just weld a piece of angle right across here with a flat there and a flat there just to give it some extra support. Okay, and here's the layout of how I'm going to put this together just so you can see it. Then I'm going to put it together and show it to you then. So the cotter pin, three-quarter inner diameter washer, of course the wheel, another washer. Now this is a three-quarter inner diameter, three-eighths wide spacer that I just cut out of this steel pipe from the hardware store. Three-quarter inner diameter, so it slides right over this. And so that collar will allow the wheel to be spaced out. Um, away from these bolts right here so they don't rub on the bolts. And I think if I had even used the hex caps, you know, their little shallower profile, it would, I would still have to put something there, I think. Pushed up nice and tight here. Make our little mark right here. Okay, let's try it out. slides around pretty easily on the, I mean on the driveway at least, flat concrete. Let's we'll see how it does in the gravel. Okay, so my regular Arcan jack gets hung up on this and I have to literally lift it over to get it over this threshold. That's
not that difficult to position. skid marks and <laughs> we kind of knew what these results would be we knew they would be you know that this just wouldn't perform as well and this performs, obviously, rolls over things a lot easier. Okay, let's see how far we get. <laughs> it's gonna fall off, it's gonna fall off. There it goes. Okay, and one more thing about this jack. I could have put these big wheels on the front, like, uh, to match. And of course that would roll even easier. But what I worried about was the big wheels would be a lot taller than the lowest part of the saddle here. And I still want to be able to use this, you know, on the Foreigner or the Xterra or slide it under a differential of a smaller car if I can. And I didn't want these to be too big, so. Okay, and here's what the final bracket looks like. Just some probably one eighth angle just to tie it together. Let's get a little close up of the final product. I just painted my bracket red. Just now, when you're torquing these down, I don't know what the torque specs are actually, but uh, I tightened up my hand with a 3 8 ratchet, and that's it. Not using a half inch, not using an impact. So, use an impact to run them on and off, but that's about it. Oh, and also this sleeve that I put over the front axle right here, this 3 8 pipe, just to kind of give it some more lateral support. Um, I did not put back here. And I have the pipe to do it, but I decided against it since I welded this piece across here. Okay, so I think this will be strong enough for what I'm doing. Now, what am I going to be lifting with this? Yeah, the one side of a car, or one side of the Jeep, or one side of the diesel pickup. Or I might be lifting the tractor. The tractor is 6,000 pounds. Um, if I'm lifting the back with a backhoe on it, you know, it's that'll be 3,000 something pounds probably. So it's going to be heavy. And so, but I think this is, you know, with three quarter axles, I think this is going to do the business. Okay guys, I couldn't resist. DIY off-road jack versus Badlands off-road jack, both three ton, both aluminum. We're gonna compare the two in the next video, in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe to look for that. There's some pros and cons to both, and uh, we're gonna talk about those, and we're gonna talk about price. This is gonna be exciting, fun. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.